For this video, I thought it'd be pretty cool to look at what it might be like streaming to Twitch or YouTube uh, using the M1 Mini. And then I thought to myself, well, how would that compare against just using the Quadra that's currently in my gaming computer? So that's a Quadra P4000, by the way. And that's the whole purpose of this video, is to see um, what are the differences, if any, between the two. And spoiler alert, both do great. And honestly, you could go either way at home. If you already have a Quadro card, you're probably fine to stick with that. If you have an M1 Mac Mini or an M1 uh, chip at home that you're not really sure what to do with, or you're looking to leverage it a little bit more, and maybe you're looking to get into Twitch streaming or YouTube streaming or any kind of streaming, uh, you could totally do it. Uh, the experience was great. So that's the uh, spoiler for this entire video. But uh, I did want to show you guys and make some objective comparisons between the quality of them. And it's not directly apples to apples or uh, it's not it's not a directly apples to apple comparison because the M1 doesn't obviously have the same hardware available to it that the Quadra does. So there are some changes that we had to do software wise um, to actually make both look good. And we're gonna start off by looking at um, both in the best case scenario using a bit, a bit rate of like 40,000 kilobits per second, which is obviously something you can't do when you're streaming to Twitch or YouTube because those services only accept, um, I think, Twitch accepts up to 6,000 kilobits per second and um, YouTube does 9,000 kilobits per second. So you couldn't even do 40,000 if you wanted to. But, you know, I don't know. Everyone, I, I wanted to show you what they would look like at their peak. And then we'll also do some comparisons of what they look like um, if you were streaming to Twitch, uh, what you could expect out of there at a 6,500 kilobit per second uh, bit rate. So let's go ahead and take a look at these um, so we can get a good idea of what you might be able to expect. I think I said that already. I do that a lot. Here are the settings for the Quadro P4000 I used for the tests with the exception of the 40,000 kilobit test. So the only things that did change here are the resolutions, which isn't actually shown on this page, it's on a different page, but we did 1920 by 1080 p and a 2560 by 1440 p test. And next up are the settings that we used for Apple M Apple's M1 encoder. We use the Apple VT H.264 hardware encoder, and we used a bit rate of 6,500 as well, even though it shows 40,000 kilobits per second in this example. And that's really all the only changes that you can make here uh, for this particular hardware. For our first test, we are doing 1920 by 1080 and a bit rate of 40,000 kilobits per second. The Quadro P4000 is on the left and the M1 encoder is on the right. I think both of these are very close and I can't really see any differences between the two, but I'll let you guys decide what you think looks better or worse. Okay, for our simulated streaming test, we're using a bit rate of 6,500 kilobits per second for both. That's about the maximum that Twitch supports. And both of these are at a 1920 by 1080 resolution that we're capturing. Of course, the NVIDIA Quadro P4000 is on the left and Apple's M1 is on the right. And again, I think these are pretty similar in uh, terms of their quality as well as clarity.
Finally, we have a 2560 by 1440 stream test, again at 6,500 kilobits per second, and also at the resolution of 2560 by 1440 with the Quadro P4000 on the left and the Apple M1 on the right. I'll let you guys be the judge of what you think looks better. Based off the three videos I showed you guys, I think that the M1 only did marginally better on the 2560 by 1440 resolution. It seemed a little less pixelated than the Quadro did, but that might just be me seeing something where something didn't exist or where that didn't exist. So I'd like to know what you guys think about uh, the three that I showed you, which one looked better, which ones looked the same, or were there any differences, were there, where were there differences? I'd like to know that. And one thing the key nine among you might notice is that the benchmark doesn't run exactly the same in each one. You'll see that the birds take off at different times. And you'll also see that the pickup truck sometimes just stops straight or turns slightly to the right. That's just part of the benchmark. It's nothing I can really do about it. And it isn't consistent between run to run, but that's not what we're analyzing. We're really only analyzing the quality of the stream or recording, not necessarily the actual like frame rate or anything like that. And also I wanna preface this video, and well, I guess it's not really a preface, uh, I, but I did wanna let you guys know that I'm not a, a Twitch or YouTube streaming expert. That's not really my genre. I just kind of set, did my OBS settings at what I think looked best uh, to my eyes and kind of went from there. And I did do a practice stream with the M1 prior to this to see if I liked the settings I had. It seemed to go really well. Uh, the couple of people that were there didn't really complain about the quality and they said it looked fine. Uh, me watching that video afterwards, it also appeared fine to me and I think it was more than acceptable for using the M1's hardware encoder to, to do like capture and streaming. So. Well, also encoding, obviously. I am a bit surprised with these results because I didn't really know what to expect from Apple's M1 chip for encoding, um, I guess, a Twitch stream. So I was pretty impressed with that. I've already been familiar with Quadros doing encoding streams in the past and transcoding in the past with like things like Plex, as well as Twitch and YouTube. So I already knew what to expect there, but I didn't expect them to be so close and um, or really, I expected there'd be a, more of a difference, I suppose, and there really wasn't any that I could tell. But yeah, kudos to Apple and their M1. That chip is really impressive uh, for what they got going on. And who knows, maybe if you can't afford a graphics card and because uh, of all the uh, scalping that's going on and the price markups, maybe an M1 laptop or M1 Mac mini like I have is for you if you want a secondary PC to do all your capturing and coding and all that jazz. I think that's actually a pretty legitimate option because you get a full on desktop experience with like, especially the M1 mini and it's pretty inexpe inexpensive. I think it's like 650 bucks starting. My particular con configuration is 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 megabytes, uh, or <laughs> megabytes, gigabytes of storage. So it's not the highest N1, but I think it does pretty good. So, and they're only gonna get cheaper when Apple releases their next generation of products. So, I don't know, something to consider, I guess, if you're on the fence or, I don't know, maybe this, I don't know really who this video is for. I just wanted to do it to see if, like, what it was like. So, anyway, I'm done rambling. I'm gonna cut it short. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace.